assalamu alaikum students welcome back with another session in real analysis in the previous lecture we defined the limit of a sequence we studied a precise definition of the limit of a sequence and then we proved the limits of some given sequences using the definition of the limit of a sequence in today's lecture we are going to prove a very important theorem regarding the limit of a sequence and that is the uniqueness of the limit of a sequence so let us first state this theorem and then prove it so theorem so this theorem says that a convergent sequence of real numbers has one and only one limit or we can also say that so that is the limit of a convergent sequence is always unique okay so we are going to prove the uniqueness of the limit of a sequence proof but before we start with the proof of this theorem let us first of all recall the definition of the limit of a sequence so a sequence suppose sn converges to a limit s if for every small positive real number epsilon there exists a positive integer n say that the distance between s n and s is less than epsilon for all n greater than that n so this is the definition of the limit of a sequence so now let's start with the proof of the theorem that a convergent sequence always has one and only one limit so we will prove this theorem by the method of contradiction so we prove it by the method of contradiction okay so we will suppose opposite to this so we will suppose that a sequence sn converges to two different limits so let us suppose suppose our sequence sn converges to two limits s and t where s is not equal to t okay so we have supposed that our sequence sn converges to two different limits s and t okay then according to the definition of limit of a sequence okay then the 
there exist two positive integers n1 and n2 say that the distance between sn and s is less than epsilon for all n greater than n1 and the distance between s n the second limit t is less than epsilon for all n greater than n2 okay so if we suppose two limits for this sequence then by definition we get these two inequalities okay so now these two inequalities can happen simultaneously so sn minus s mod is less than epsilon and sn minus t mod is less than epsilon for all n greater than maximum of n1 n2 okay so these two inequalities can happen simultaneously for all n greater than maximum of these two positive integers n1 n2 okay now epsilon is some positive real number small positive real number so let us assume here that epsilon is equal to s minus t mod over 2 so this is a positive real number so we have taken epsilon to be mod of s minus t by 2 okay and then we consider s minus t mod so s minus t mod can be written as s minus sn plus sn minus t whole mod right and this can be further written as s minus t mod is less than or equal to s minus sn mod plus sn minus t mod so using the triangular inequality that we proved in a previous lecture so this can be further written as so this inequality can be written as s minus t mod is less than or equal to s minus sn mod can also be written as sn minus s whole mod sn minus s mod plus sn minus t mod so this implies s minus t whole mod is less than now if we substitute the values of sn minus s and sn minus t from these inequalities they are less than epsilon so this thing will become less than now less than epsilon plus epsilon so this implies s minus t mod is less than 2 times of epsilon now here s minus t mod is equal to 2 times of epsilon so we can also write it as 2 times epsilon is less than 2 times epsilon which is a false statement which is not possible okay so which is not possible hence our supposition that sn converges to two different limits leads us to a false statement or some impossible statement or it leads us to a contradiction so hence our supposition is wrong and the sequence converges to only one limit okay so therefore sn converges to a unique limit okay so now so this is the proof of the theorem so let us recap the proof of this theorem the theorem was that a convergent sequence always converges to a unique limit so we suppose on contrary so we prove this theorem by the method of contradiction so we suppose on opposite that sn converges to two different limits s and t okay so then 
there exist two positive integers for each limit n1 and n2 say that sn minus s mod is less than epsilon and sn minus t mod is less than epsilon and these two thing happen simultaneously for the same sequence sn for all n greater than maximum of n1 and n2 and we chose a number epsilon positive real number s minus t mod all divided by 2 and we started with s minus t mod and we wrote it as s minus sn plus sn minus t we expanded it by the triangular inequality and we simplified it and then we reached a false statement okay so our supposition led us to a false statement so hence our supposition was wrong so therefore the sequence converges to only a unique limit so i hope you have understood the proof of the uniqueness theorem of the limit of a sequence in the next lecture we will prove the laws of limits for sequences so see you in the next lecture